So just in case you didn't know, your portfolio is the most important thing on your website as a photographer, hands down. What's going on? Welcome to another video. So today we're going to be talking about 10 huge mistakes that photographers make on their portfolio. These are all mistakes that I made, you know, mostly in the beginning of my photography career. And these are mistakes that I see a lot of new photographers and some photographers with experience making when it comes to their portfolio. Your portfolio is probably going to be the main deciding factor for the most part when it comes to people booking you. I know pricing plays a part. You know other things play a part too but it really comes down in the end to your actual work what can you create and how your images look and if the client likes what they see so if you're looking to grow as a photographer or just grow your business in general your portfolio is definitely something that you always want to pay attention to all right y'all already know i'm not going to waste your time so let's get straight into it so mistake number one is not showing your strongest work this is a huge mistake that i made in the beginning stages of my photography career, I would just put images out there, but I wasn't really thinking, you know, is this my best work? Sometimes I would just put out images just to put them out or just put images on my site just to have more images. But I wasn't really thinking from, you know, like, what does this image look like to the client? And just not really taking a look at my images and just putting the best available images out there. So when it comes to putting your work out there on your website, your portfolio, your social media, just however you're marketing your images, you always want to put your strongest work first to leave a good first impression. All right. So mistake number two is inconsistent editing. This is a huge mistake that a lot of photographers make. Definitely a mistake that I made in the beginning. I was trying different, all kinds of different presets and all types of editing styles. <laughs> clients were probably like what the heck am i gonna get from this guy am i getting dark and moody light and airy freaking oversaturated like i don't know what i'm getting i like to look at this from the client's perspective if a, if a client is purchasing from you if they're trying to get a photography session from you they're looking at your portfolio they want to see consistency uh you know especially even if i'm a client i'm i'm looking for consistent images because i want to know exactly what i'm getting to exactly what i'm getting as far as the images from the photographer and overall, I just think consistent editing looks really good and it makes your brand look really good and very cohesive. And I've, I've found that those are things that are really important with your website, your portfolio, just whatever when it comes to your photography business is making everything cohesive and just look good. All right, so mistake number three is not separating the different types of photography you do. So what I mean by this is your portfolio on your website, you can have different sections so if you do different types of photography you could have weddings families kids events you could have all those different sections so clients can go to you know whatever they're looking for so a mistake that photographers make is they have they don't have these different sections so within their portfolio they have all types of photography they have car photography landscape studio photography wedding photography i think this is a huge mistake that you do not want to make so once again, going back to the client's perspective, you don't want them searching around on a portfolio full of six different types of photography and they're looking for newborn photography in this way at the bottom. Like people are just going to leave your website. So you have to make it easy for the client. You want to have different sections and you want to have all these different types of photography separated. All right. So mistake number four is too many images. So listen up. It's all about quality over quantity huge mistake that I made in the past. It was just trying to put out so many images. Now I used to think, and maybe it's just me, I used to think I had to have a lot of work to show potential clients, but this is far from true. You pretty much just need enough work to show them. And from my experience, you don't have to have a lot. Like when we got our first wedding, we started booking more weddings. We just had one wedding on our website and maybe a couple style shoots. So, you know, that just kind of goes to show you don't need a whole bunch of work to put on your portfolio you just have to have enough images to show the client that you can do the job i wouldn't just put images on your website just to have them up you know images that are not your strongest work i would just focus on quality so this is something that i learned when it comes to photography and your work just put out your best work focus on quality it's not about quantity i know some of us can get caught up in other photographers you see you know they have so much work on their portfolios they're posting so much to social media you kind of get in your own head but you don't have to have as much work as them you can still book it's all about the work that you have and just showing your best work so mistake number five is you don't have a website to host your portfolio 
So if you've been on the channel for a while, you already know how I feel about websites. And if you don't have a website, you need to get one right now, like right now, right after this video, go to WordPress or Squarespace. Those are the two I recommend and get you a website. But anyways, you want a website to have your portfolio on. You don't just want to be sending your clients just images on through email, like single big images. <laughs> like I said, it's all about being cohesive and looking up to par and looking professional. And I think it's best to have your portfolio on a, you know, nice, beautifully designed website. Now, if you are completely new, I do think it's okay to have like a, a PDF that kind of shows off your work or something like that. But I do think you should try to get a website as quick as possible. All right, so mistake number six is not updating your portfolio. This is very, very important right here. I know as photographers, we can get lazy. A lot of photographers don't even like dealing with their websites. Sometimes I don't, I don't wanna deal with my website. I just, I don't even wanna look at it, right? <laughs> you know, it's a lot that we have to manage, you know, SEO and, updating our site, updating our copy. It's just a lot sometimes, but you want to be constantly updating this portfolio with fresh and new work. Once again, you want to be showing your best work. And you know, just like with anything, you want to keep it updated. You don't want to have, you know, your website and portfolio not updated in like two years. And you have all these, all this new work that you haven't even put up on your site. So clients don't even see it. And you have to think over time, you're going to get better as a photographer. So you want to show off your skills and how much better you've gotten. So you need to update your portfolio with your newest work. I found the best way to do this is to just kind of schedule it out. So it's just on your calendar. I'm going to update my portfolio every you know, two months or every month and just kind of schedule it out so you know it's coming up and you can stay consistent with it. All right, so mistake number seven is no contact info or button on your website. So I think not just on the portfolio section of your website, but just your website in general, you need to have contact information. Like if you're making this mistake, you are losing out on potential clients because they have no place to contact you or you don't have any contact info. So make sure you have a button somewhere near your portfolio or just on your site that the client can click on to go to your contact form or just even at the bottom, the footer of your website, having some contact information. So a phone number or a email to where the client can get in touch with you. All right. So mistake number eight is your images are too big. So if you have images on your website that are too big, this is going to slow down the performance of your website, which is really bad. You don't want this happening. And I see this mistake a lot with photographers. They put these big old images on their website. They take forever to load and it's just going to mess up your website and slow your website down. So what you want to do is reduce the size of these images when you put them up on, on your website. So they're optimized for your website so they can load fast and they don't affect the speed of your website. So what I use is, I think it's called tiny no, it's called JPEG mini. So this is a plugin I have on my website. I can't remember, but I think I purchased it. But what it does is it optimizes the size of the images on my website. So every time I upload an image to my website or my portfolio, it, it makes a smaller size of that image. So it's not as big. So you definitely want to look into something like that for your website to optimize your images in the size of your images. I think it's called JPEG mini. And I think I've, I've heard of another one. I think it's called tiny png i think don't hold me to that but i think that's what it's called so check those out all right so coming in at mistake number nine is your images aren't seo optimized so as a photographer we're always trying to get found by clients this is something that is very important is your visibility as a photographer do people know about you can they find you so this is where this comes into play and this is really important so with your images on your portfolio you need to optimize these images to show up when people are searching for specific things that are related to the type of images that you do. So something you can do with your images once you put them on your website is you can fill out the alt tags. So these alt tags are, you know, just a short description of these images. And like I was saying before, they can help your images get found on Google. This is something that kind of used to confuse me. So I'm going to try to break this down in a simple way and kind of give you an example. So let's say I had some wedding images on my website. So an alt tag, for one of those images could be beautiful bride and groom at specific venue in a specific area. So I'm intentionally putting keywords, which would be the venue and then my area. So these are words that, you know, people are searching for and things that can show up on Google. So it's helping my images pop up 
when people are looking for those things. Now with these alt tags, it's important you don't just stuff them with keywords. For example, I'm in College Station, so I just don't wanna be putting College Station wedding photographer. That's not the right way to put an alt tag. You need to describe the photo and work in those specific keywords, but the text that you put has to make sense. You don't just wanna be stuffing with keywords. So if you wanna become more visible and get found on Google, you definitely wanna to go to your portfolio and your images on your site and update all the alt tags for your images. All right, so we're almost done. So the last mistake that photographers make with their portfolio is it is not mobile friendly. And you wanna make sure that your just website in general, not just your portfolio, is mobile friendly and it looks good on mobile. This is something that some photographers and just people in general, they're not, they don't check. You always wanna make sure that your website looks good on mobile and not just desktop. So with a lot of these editors, like um, I use Flow Themes for my website, they have a desktop view, a tablet view, and a mobile view. I don't know if this is for every uh, website or template that people are using, but specifically with flow things this is what i love about it because i can see the view of everything you know desktop tablet and mobile which is very important because you want to make sure your website is working and looks good on those devices and not just desktop this is definitely something that you want to constantly check just to make sure everything looks good and is working properly and you have to keep in mind that a lot of clients are looking for you on their mobile devices not their desktop so it's very important that everything looks good on mobile if you enjoyed this video, then I know you'll love this playlist that I have on my channel. It's for beginner photographers. So I break down a lot of information within this playlist and have a lot of videos that can help you if you are a photographer just trying to make more money and grow your business. So be sure to check out that playlist. I'm gonna link it in the card up top. Always point in the wrong way. So we're just gonna do this. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and uh, I will see y'all in my next video. Peace.